Hey everybody, what's going on? What I got for you today is I got another Bleach Chapter review. In fact, Bleach Chapter 526 titled Battle. Alright, and this review is going to be hosted by none other than me, Shimigami X, aka Dark X. Alright, let's get this cracker like in. Okay. I'm going to run through what happened in the chapter. I'm going to break down what happened to you. Okay. In the very beginning, um, like the sequence of events continues from the last chapter, like as it naturally should. So what I mean by that is, you see, in, in the first instance, well, no, you see a blood splatter, which was the slap which came from the slash that Kenpachi gave at the last panel in the previous chapter 525, the edges. Alright, then, as a result of that, you see Unahana, she has a slice down her, down her shoulder, like shoulder down through to her chest. And then she goes on to tell Kenpachi, what, did you think I was dead? Um, and then obviously she shows them that no, it's not even close. And she begins to heal herself with like the healing techniques that she learned from Karinji. Alright. Then, what happens then, after she heals herself, she then releases her Bankai. And then, in the next panel, like, she goes ballistic again, so does Kenpachi, like, you know, with white pupils and everything, just going nuts, clashing at each other, going crazy. And so, yeah, slashing, clashing, you know, fighting all brutal, like. Alright, then, what happens next is that the effects of her Bankai seem to kick in. And her Bankai ability is kind of confusing, but from what I can gather from it, it looks like an illusionary type. Um, similar but dissimilar to like something like Aizen's, where it control like your senses and you know use hypnosis and whatever, create illusions and hallucinations and whatnot. And what I mean by that is, um, in the next like page, whatnot, in the next panel page, you see Kenpachi bits of his flesh rotting away, as well as Unahana. Like you see her face is gone. Like you see Kenpachi half of his face is gone. It's just his eye socket there, and you know, but they're still fighting. They're still clashing. Then, um. Kenpachi, Kenpachi wakes up from it, so he snaps out of it, and then he continues to fight. Unahana dodges and counters and etc. etc. They continue clashing and fighting. All right, then what happens after that is Unahana goes on to explain that um, you know her being a Kenpachi and all and all that Kenpachi Zaraki learned how to learn how to restrain himself as she was mentioning in the last chapter, so he could enjoy fighting forever. And her method of learning, of being able to enjoy fighting forever was, was to heal herself in battle, so any damage she takes, she'll heal herself. Like with the healing techniques Karinji taught her, like I was explaining earlier. Alright. What then happens next is she is talking about, you know, this confrontation that she that she's having with Kenpai. She's talking about a confrontation. and. Before, before like ever meeting Kenpachi and whatnot, and ever fighting with him, she never knew quite knew what to call this confrontation. And then, obviously, with Kenpachi fighting him, with Kenpachi Zaraki, I'm talking about Udahana fighting Kenpachi. She feels the thrill and enjoyment of battle. And then she realizes that what this confrontation is is fighting. And then you see like the panel changes, and then you know they're attacking each other. Um, Kenpachi still looking crazy, Udahana looking crazy, going at it. Like, you know, quite a lethal, quite a lethal and brutal battle. We can all agree on that. Alright. Then what happens next is that the panel changes and we into a flashback. And this flashback is back into the times when Kenpachi was still a kid and Unahana appears to be like, you know, the same appearance as she is still the captain and whatnot. She has the two um uh, two squad members behind her. And then what we see is we see we actually see her Bankai because I've noticed that with her Bankai, her sword changes black. Just like um, Ichigo's um, Bankai, his sword changes to black. So she has her she has her Zanpakuto face down above Kenpachi's head. Um, Kid Kenpachi I'm talking about. And the Kid Kenpachi is on the floor, laid out with like, blood coming out of his head, like pouring out a pool of blood, like he's just cracked his head open or, you know, he's obviously just been defeated in battle. Um, which kind of makes sense to me, but I'll go into that after I explain the chapter to you. All right. She then goes on to say that um, this boy, this boy deserves the title of Kenpachi. So she's acknowledged his strength during battle as a child. So the way it looked to me is that he was more or less dead. So it's like she has revived him, and which is why Kenpachi is here today. Okay. Then we go into the, we go back into like you know the present. So like the adult Kenpachi is still fighting um, Unahana, and then. She goes on to explain that how she loves fighting so much, etc, etc. And then, she then goes on to explain that, you know, nobody has ever made her so happy. And that, you know, he, there can only be one Kenpachi per era. And what she means by that is that, 
right as it stands, she's so strong that she was given the title Kenpachi. She's the first Kenpachi. And she has given the title Kenpachi to Kenpachi Zaraki because she, like, you know, acknowledges his strength, believes he's that strong. So saying that only one can exist, exist in that era, then the panel changes and she says that, after she says that, you know, Kenpachi Zaraki is the only person, or is the only man who has ever made her happy. And obviously what she means by that is that, you know, fighting wise, you know, she never found a decent opponent before and someone she can go all out with and enjoy battle to her full extent. All right. Um, after that, what we see, we see Kenpachi Zaraki stab through Unahana, like his blade goes right through her. And if you look closely at the panel, it looks just like um, in the same place where he stabbed her before, but we can't see that because it's like a behind shot, so we see the sword come through her back. But it looks like it would have penetrated in a similar place where he stabbed her like the first time on her neck. All right. And then after that, chapter ends. All right. Now I'm going to get into this review. All right, I'm gonna start off with, um, you know, what I think about like this chapter. I actually think it was a very good chapter, and what makes me think it was very good was the simple fact that we got good character development, and it's starting. Things are starting to make more sense because whereas last chapter it didn't quite make sense to me, and I'm sure I explained this before that um, Kenpachi as a child was stronger than he is as a full-grown man, which didn't make sense to me because naturally you grow stronger as you develop from a boy to a man. So seeing the panel where. Um, Unahana actually defeated Kenpachi and then you know you can tell that she's healed him otherwise he wouldn't be alive today so that makes sense and that she's acknowledged his strength and I think when she was saying that you know he was stronger as a child than he was as a full grown man that he's limited himself that much I think it wasn't literally speaking I think it just meant was figuratively speaking just by the um, you know looking at this chapter um, well, I think what she generally means, like his tenacity, his fiery will to fight, the fact that he's now holding back because as a full grown man, he should be a lot stronger than he is now. Like he shouldn't be losing to Ichigo. He shouldn't just barely win against the Noitero. These are opponents that you should mop the floor with, um, including herself. Okay. Another thing is that we get to see is that we generally do see how strong Kenpachi really is and that, you know, after healing, you know, Unahana and whatnot, it doesn't look like she's going to be coming back from this stab because what the chapter was saying about, you know, there's going to be one Kenpachi per era, it just looks like now the title is being passed on. And I think that's what this chapter was mainly about, passing on the title of Kenpachi. Like, it's a shame to lose such a strong Shimagami, you know, someone who would have been a great asset in the war against the Quincy's, um, you know, the Stern Ridders and Star Knights. It'd have been, she would have been such a great asset along with Kenpachi, but it's like, the generation is changing as you can see like with um you know for example um gen yusai yamamoto dying and then it being passed on to like one of his favorite students like the title of cap uh captain commander is being passed on to shunsui kyoraku shunsui who's like his greatest student and then you know the title of kenpachi is now being officially passed down to kenpachi zaraki by unahana who is the person that he looked up to and you know so you can see that the generation is changing now so Bleach is now moving forward. You know, he's like, obviously, with the uprising of Ichigo and whatnot. So, anyways, back to this chapter. Um, in some places, I do think this chapter was a bit confusing because there's certain bits of dialogue that is, becomes a bit unclear as to who is speaking. Like, for example, um, just a short bit of when she's mentioning about, you know, where, where it's talking about, you know, f fighting in this dream state. Like, I've, I've woken up. Is it talking? Is it? It's unclear whether it's talking about Kenpachi woken up, waking up, you know, from you know, um, Unahana's bankai and her abilities, or whether it's Unahana waking up. But so it's a bit unclear. So I'd give it a bit of a downer for that. I got that's one of the gripes I have with it. Um, other than that, I do think it was a great chapter because we see some epic battle scenes. We see Unahana going crazy again, and like you know, revealing herself why she really was called the first Kenpachi, and then. We see Kenpachi Zaraki in, you know, all in his badass self, um, battling it out with her, you know, still fighting off at Bankai, and he's that stab he gave her looks like it killed her, and I'm gonna I'm gonna call it she's dead. All right, and it killed her, and he didn't even release a Shikai. He still has yet to learn his Shikai. So it's just like Kubo said, there's like one of the um, great secrets of Bleach is how strong Kenpachi Zaraki really is, his true strength, and yeah. 
I gotta say overall this is a great chapter. Um, in terms of the artwork, I thought it was fantastic. It's very it's drawn very well. In terms of the panels and the fight scene, it's very clear to see like the fluidity of the movements, for example, like when Kenpachi slashes and then Unahana jumps up and dodges, it's quite clear to see and understand and interpret the movements without it actually being animated. So when the Bleach Manga does come back on, like, you know, these battles are they're gonna look epic. And I do presume they'll be actually longer than we're reading because these are several chapters, so I do see the fight being quite long because it was a quite dramatic and intense battle. Um, in terms of story progression, it wasn't really so much story progression because it was just showing, you know, a battle between Kenpachi and Unahana and, you know, basically concluding Unahana's character, in my opinion, and, you know, passing the title of Kenpachi. Uh, for character development, I did think it was great because it just shows, like, you know, the way the Kenpachi is to pass on the legacy, what they have to do is they have to kill the previous Kenpachi. And then, in doing so, that's how the title gets passed down. So, I really think where Bleach is going is just showing that, you know what, times are changing, the generations are moving on, like, for example, like I said saying before, Genryu is dead, Shunsui's taken over, um, Unohana, I'm calling it, she's dead, and then Kenpachi is now, Kenpachi Zaraki is now taking over as the Kenpachi of this generation, this era, you know, special war potential and everything. So, overall, I do think this is a great chapter, guys. Um... You know, let me know if I missed anything, and that's all I have for today. Let me know if I missed anything. You know, let me know what you think, because, like, you know, I'm quite, I'm still quite new to the YouTube community. So, let me know what I can improve on. Let me know if I missed anything. Hit me up, comment, rate, subscribe, as always, for more videos, for more Bleach Chapter reviews. And anyways, this is me, Shinigami X, aka The Dark X. I'm out. Take care, and peace. Uh,